Well, look at that. We have some itty bitty baby raspberries. Fantastic. And that, my friends, right there is proof that food is free. Hey there everybody, my name is JT Bear. Welcome back to my small farm channel. Today I'm uh, getting back into the Permaculture Pirate series with uh, one I think more people need to stop and remember, and that is food is free. In nature, the birds do not run around with little debit cards and pay for the stuff at the trees, okay? It was never, ever meant to be a cash thing. A lot of what we're trying to do with our permaculture efforts is to basically ensure free food for our future and for our future generations. But um, we end up spending an awful lot of money doing that. Trees, shrubs, bushes, these things are not cheap when you buy them at the big box stores. However, if you take a little time and look around you, they are available for free. Take for example this very humble row of raspberries. I just planted these in here, I don't believe it was last year, I think it was the year before. And these are from wild gathered stocks. Sure tastes like a delicious standard old raspberry to me though. And that is officially the first one I've gotten to eat, and eat from here. We've seen a few others form on here, but I'm kind of just letting them fall so that hopefully nature can take its course and more of them will grow up. I'm sure several of them will get eaten by the squirrels and the birds and all that stuff. Again, that's nature taking its course, but this is how I'm leaving these to grow. I haven't weeded these. I will probably cut down the non-raspberries next year, throw down a layer of mulch. Might even do that before fall. Oh, there's a couple more little ones in there. But I didn't pay one cent for these. I paid time. And if you think about it, that's what money is. Money is little tiny pieces of paper that represent time. I could go into that in great detail. May do it on a live stream. Not going to do it today, but some food for thought. But that little row of raspberries I've got came from plants I pulled in here. And uh, I wasn't even really looking for them. I was just kind of checking out one of our little gates along the back fence. And I'm like, hey, those are raspberries. I got to take a closer look at that. When I took a closer look, I saw proof. Yep, these are definitely wild growing raspberries. And of course, I came back with a shovel, didn't I? Lined up a nice whole area. And I'm about to do that again, but not here. I want to let this grow in a little bit thicker before I take any more from here. A word of warning though, when you are going through abandoned properties and such, keep aware of where your feet are. I just found this. And of course, I'm basically barefoot. I'm in like open-toed Roman style sandals here. Mr. Bear the Hippie. But you got to be aware. Always be aware of your surroundings, but especially when you're going onto abandoned lands like we are about to now. Because, I mean, this is kind of abandoned. This is behind the fence. And before we got here, this area was not exactly maintained. As you can see, I'm working on that now. But let's carry on down the field a little bit. Beautiful canola field here. Not quite ready for harvest. Totally a side note, but in case you're interested in where your canola oil comes from, actually kind of look like peas. Anyway, we're going down the field a piece. So now we're wandering through the high grasses, a couple houses down the road. Technically down the road, but we're down in the field. And as you can see, this is not maintained land. No one is worried about the well-being of all of these raspberries. Now I'm not going to come and take all of them by any means, but raspberries really like to spread out. So as I pull these up, I'm going to find tons of little ones in the grasses, and I'm going to be able to establish a really nice second row somewhere, probably a little sunnier. Probably going to grab a couple of these taller ones as well. Like I say, nobody's caring for these things right now. And, well, I'd like to be the one who does. Bear hunting berries in the wood. No real surprise that. Also growing everywhere along this particular field we have these choke cherries. Now these 
are a nice deep purple so they probably have some wonderful antioxidant qualities but I don't dig on them because they're almost entirely pit so not quite worth the effort to me raspberries though tiny seeds lots of fruit definitely worth some time with the shovel that's what I'm saying though food can be basically free if you're willing to invest a little bit of your your own time and your own effort into the acquisition of your food and you know filling your plate then you can save an awful lot of money because as I was saying earlier money is little squares of other people's time or your time you trade your time for for money you trade your money for something that someone took their time to make it's an interesting little cycle and when you think about it capitalism's actually not all that bad it's just when greed gets involved that things get ugly but we're walking a little bit further down the field because uh, one thing a lot of people here are concerned with is with all those trees coming down JT what are you gonna do to block the winter winds and snows well I keep telling them I have a plan but nobody believes me because I just look like some random ponytail from the city but check it out we are now behind lots that are so long abandoned the houses have been torn down and here we see a nice long needled pine variety I'm going to be trying to transplant to that this fall I don't want it to get too much bigger but if we look down a little tiny spruce a little tiny spruce a little tiny spruce some larger ones more in the size of what I'm going to try and transplant coming over a little bit more I think those are some dying choke cherries we've got another sort of the long needled pine so I'm going to plant these along this side of our back fence and they're going to grow up there to block the wind for me I've got a funny feeling it's time for me to get my butt out of the field but there you go folks I mean permaculture piracy seems like such a silly concept but if it's out there if it's free if it's going to waste otherwise I mean not that letting the the birds and the rodents and such have their fill is really being wasteful I mean, th that's not what I'm saying at all but it <sighs> Ultimately taking a few of them from that like we're back at the raspberry patch here if I take even One out of every ten there. You're not even going to notice that and we're going to have a beautiful row of raspberry canes That we'll be able to harvest for years to come should any of them fall I know where to come back to get more and most importantly especially in situations like here in Manitoba when you're harvesting things from the wild this way like the choke cherries which I'm not doing or the raspberries which I am you already know that they are well they're, they're climate tolerant they're, they're gonna grow in your zone they're hardy enough whatever phrasing works for you you know that sucker's gonna live and that will give you fruit and you don't have to worry about going to the big box stores dropping 50 bucks in a couple of bushes putting them in the ground and come spring they're brown they're dead that sucker was not coming back you wasted your money and just you're not getting a return so yeah, I'd much rather, when possible, harvest things from the wild. And don't think that this only applies to small berries, because this works for fruits and all kinds of things. I mean, think about it. Go out, get yourself a couple of apples, plant all those seeds. Yeah, you're probably not going to get amazing, delicious apples out of it, but you might. But you don't really care, because what you're after is an apple seedling that will grow in your environment. Once you've got a few of those, well, then you start wandering around and you get clippings from other people's trees and you work on grafting those clippings onto your hardy apple rooting and there you go I mean there's probably a lot more to it than that but it's my understanding that basically that's how that works and of course I'm gonna be trying that in the future because free fruit free food food should be free right that's the whole point of the video anyway I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of time with me walking by the canola field taking a look at uh, some of the places where I'm going to exercise a little bit of permaculture piracy and uh, well increase the amount of loot that we take from our yard every year well it's kind of a warm one so I'm gonna head inside but uh, yeah thank you all for sticking around and I will see you guys in the next kind of random video here on my small farm channel take care everybody oh look more free choke cherries more choke cherries would you believe it? More choke cherries.